Let's, um, let's take a look at the homework here. Uh, in particular, uh, we looked at the first couple there, and I think it sounds like people are pretty, uh, pretty comfortable with those problems. But I asked you to do numbers 22, 23, and 24 last night, and uh, I want to make sure you guys are good on, on a word problem. So the problem said, uh, it was talking about the number of computers per 100 people, right? Something like that? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at number 22 and 23 and 24 on last night's homework. Just to, just to be clear, I, I think people were struggling with that. Am I right? I mean, are you okay with this? Or is it just a little weird? You guys like have this aversion to word problems, so check it out. Um, the model it said in the problem was c equals 25.2 times 1.15 to the t. All right. So take a look. Isn't that the model it says in the in that problem on number 22, 23, 24? Okay. Um, and it said that C is the number of computers. Why yeah. is that thing blinking? It's per 100 people. And this is the number of years since 1991, right? Okay, so those are the two variables that are in the equation. It's important we understand what those two things mean. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, so let's be clear. Let's make sure when we look at this equation, we know what it means. And 22, in fact, number 22, is that's what it's asking. It's like, what is this equation about? Break it down. What does each of these things mean? And this gets into what we were saying yesterday, Jennifer. You said, are we going to talk about this equation? And like, yeah, right now. How about? I love it. Okay. You love this equation, don't you? All right, so what is the number of computers per 100 people? in 1991. Can you see it from this equation? What would T be? Yeah. What would T be? If we're in 1991, though, zero. it would be zero, right? How many years since 1991 is it? If we're in 1991. Zero, right? So what would, what would happen if you put zero in here for T? Wouldn't you get a C value? That would be the number of computers that would be there for 100 people in the year 1991. What would you get if you plug zero in? No? Well, I mean, you get one here, but then you'd multiply. 25.2. You'd get 25.2. And in fact, in general, in this equation, right, when we were dealing with this equation yesterday, in general, this number is always what you'll get when you plug zero in, right? Which makes sense. So how, much, how many computers were there per, per 100 people in the year 1991? The initial amount, 25.2. And you should just be able to look at the equation and see Wait, that. How can you get 0.2 of the computer? It's on average, right? So if there are like thousands and thousands, we're surveying thousands and thousands of people. And maybe we're surveying the whole United States, you know, millions of people, right? Um, then on average, it's like if someone said, on average, there are 2.1 children per household in the United States. You'd be like, what? No, that's fine, actually. You're, you're comfortable with that, aren't you? It's not like that means when you go to someone's house, you can find like a tenth of a kid there, you know? <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. It's, a, it's an on average. It's on large scale on average, right? So um, hopefully, hopefully you're okay with that. I know that's a little weird. But. So that's the initial, that's the first part of this answer. Let's make sure we're clear on, we're going over the homework here, okay? Um, what does the 1.15 do? Well, every time, it, how, much, how many, how do we compute the number of computers in uh, 1992? What would T be? One. So that means every year you're multiplying by... 1.15, right? If you want to do 1993, it's this thing squared because you're multiplying by 1.15 twice. Yes, yes? Yes. All right, you feeling this? I hope you're feeling it, okay. Uh, so what is the growth factor? What are we multiplying by each time? The answer is, of course, 1.15. So I want to make sure you're comfortable with these words. We've got like this initial amount, 25.2. We've got this growth rate, or growth factor, it says, says there, 1.15. And then, after our discussion yesterday, what, 
what are we actually doing to something if we multiply it by 1.15? What are we actually doing to it? Remember, that's 1 plus 0.15. Isn't that what that is, really? Whoa. Why? Uh, well, I mean, we don't have to say it that way, but. Do you remember what we said? We were talking about marking up all of the items on your menu at your restaurant, right? Yeah. And we said we multiply by whatever so that we could mark it up. I think we're going to mark everything up by 2% or something, right? I don't remember how this is working. So talk to me. What's, what is this actually doing as far as percentages go, maybe? By how much? Yeah, isn't this a 15% increase? Do you see it now? So, I mean, it's easy to say, oh yeah, every year we multiply by this mysterious number, 1.15. But can you say what that kind of growth rate is in like a normal person's sense? What, what's the percent growth rate? And the answer is 15% every year, right? It's going up. Right here, right? Isn't that 15%? Just like yesterday, we were talking about marking up all the things on your menu. Oh, what were you gonna what, what were you gonna multiply so by to mark everything up to percent? 1.8 it'd be 8%. If it was say 1.8. 1.8 would be what? 8%. If it was 1.8, it would be 1.08. What would 1.8 be? It would be 80% growth rate. That's pretty big, right? It yeah. was $2. Huh? $2. All right, two. I said that. If it was two, it would be, it'd be 100% growth rate, right? <laughs> right? If this was a two in here? Yeah. So, that, I mean, there's nothing wrong with two being in there. Yeah. You can go over 100%. Sure. Yeah, you could say, you know, like, in fact, people say it all the time. Like, my friend has a startup, and they increased their revenues by 300% in the first year or something like that, right? I'm just making that up. I don't know. But you with me on that, though? Like, absolutely. People say that. Have you heard, see, heard people say that? Yeah. It makes complete sense. There's nothing mathematically wrong with that at all. The next task on this one that I think some people are kind of shying away from is number 23. It asks you to kind of graph it, right? Um, Any of you struggle with that? Do you know at least how to produce a picture of this on your calculator? The graph yeah, a graph of this on your calculator. I think we should all. I think we should all try. I think that would be a good idea. Okay. Do you know how to enter this? I actually, I'm pretty confident everyone knows how to enter it, right? Yeah. Just type in 25.2 times 1.15 to the x, and right. But then when you go to graph it, are you comfortable graphing it? Are you actually comfortable getting a picture of it? It's not a great picture, is it? Then you go to. What are you gonna do? I want to make sure you Windows. zoom standard is not pretty on this one though. Make sure you actually know how to get it on there. Everyone do this. Actually, try it on your calculator. Stop reading here and, and start trying to calculate. I want to make sure you can actually get this a good, pretty picture of this on your calculator. Zoom out. Do it now. Do it now. Yeah, yeah. Because this is like a super important skill. I always have people coming up to me and like on a quiz, and I'm not gonna help you on a quiz, right? And saying like, I have graphed this function and I can't see it. There's something wrong with my calculator. No. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. Yeah, exactly. Right. No, there's nothing wrong with your calculator. You just don't know how to use it properly. So now, right now, is the time to learn. So figure it out. See, can you get a really nice, okay. not just like barely, but like a nice picture. That's pretty decent. Yeah. See if you can get rid of. See if you can get rid of parts of the graph picture that don't you don't need, like big empty spaces. See if you can fill it with the picture. Yeah. This one here. Don't, number 23 is what we're looking at here. This guy right here. Got it. Okay. Make sure you can graph it. Now instead of C, we have Y, right? What? And instead of T, we have X, but hopefully it will look like Y. You get a good picture? Yeah, it's decent, decent. Like I said, see if you can get rid of the superfluous parts of the graph that don't show any of the graph, right? Um, what is it? 25.2 times 1.15. Okay, let's see if I can get this picture too. Yeah, it takes a little while to graph it. 25.2 times 1.15 to the x. Zoom. Six is what you'll see first. That's terrible, right? So what are you doing, people out there, to get a better picture? You could zoom in and out if you like. Um, zooming in and out is not actually the be-all and end-all, though. But uh, yeah, I would go to window and play around with it. Do we need uh, negative values for x? Remember, x is not x. x is t, right? So maybe I make that 0. Pay attention. Do we want, how about 10 years of behavior on this picture? Do you want 10 years? Sure, let's, that's good. If we want 20, we can, if we want 20, we can change this. That's not a problem, okay? How about Y min and Y max? So let's see, Y and Y, Y min and Y max, that's the number of computers per 100 people, right? Y is. 
So that can't be less than zero, right? And we already know the graph of this thing. Oh, Horizontal right. asymptote at zero. So let's make that zero. And the y max, that's got to be bigger than 10, for sure, right? In fact, in 1991, how many computers were there? 25.2, right? So we've got to have at least that y intercept to 25.2, right? Let's, but, but then it's going to just go uphill from there. You know that. Maybe 50, maybe, uh, maybe 100, right? Something big, OK? How's it going to work for you? I don't know. I mean, it should work for you. Let's check out windows. Let's compare our windows. All right, so we're getting a pretty good picture now of this behavior. It looks similar to what they have here. Um, they just did it over five years. They didn't actually do it very, very big picture of that. But yeah, I'll show you my window again if you want to have exactly. If you want to have exactly what I have, then there, that's my window. Okay. But anyway, play around with it. Is my window perfect? I mean, you can have something different. It's not a problem. Just want to make sure you're comfortable with these features of your calculator, so that when you, because you can imagine if someone just comes in here and does zoom standard. Someone does zoom standard. You can. This one actually you happen to see a little piece of, don't you? Yay. But you can imagine another, another example. It might go way up above it, right? And that's when someone comes up to me and is like, Mr. Chase, I can't see it. What's wrong? No, nothing's wrong. It's just sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, but you just need to understand what your calculator is doing. It's not doing anything wrong. You just need to make sure you know how to use it. Is that OK? Makes sense? All right. End of my conversation on how to use the calculator. OK. What else do we want to say? Okay, let's return to our regular scheduling program uh, program here. Um, I want to say something about uh, some applications today, uh, just continuing our conversation after yesterday. And I'm going to give you another crazy formula. Are you ready for this? Another crazy formula. But before I do, as I do, I should say, in fact, this one's like, this is actually the same as the first one. It's just modified a little bit. I want to say something about what this means and why it looks the way it does, OK? So all right, so this is a little bit crazy, this formula. But I'm going to explain that you're going to have full understanding and then, OK, why it looks the way it does. Are you ready? Feel free. It's also on headline, remember, OK? I'm also recording this lecture today. Um, is that why that, that? Yeah. OK. So all of the things I'm saying and all the things that are happening on the board are being recorded right now, OK? Go on record that Mr. Chase is letting me go to the bathroom. Yeah, put that on record. Put that on the record. Is this thing on? OK. Um, so you can see again. There's, how, how are you doing? Stop talking. There's no video. There's no video. Oh, there's no video. It's just, it's just No, it's this video here. Screen cap. No, but how would you, how would you replay it? Like, it's on, it'll be on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's just audio? Yeah, I'm trying it out. Here. Yeah, it's just audio. Is that right? <laughs> now you're good. <laughs> all right, stop. No, no, no. That was not the motive. OK. All right, right. Is the what? Yeah, n times t up here. Yeah, exactly. All right, but let's make sure, before you just use this blind, like, so make sure you understand what this actually says, OK? Are you ready? Okay, so let's start by, this is, so this is a formula we're going to talk about here with, that stands for compound interest, okay? And by interest we mean, we're talking about like a bank account or a money market account or a certificate of a deposit, deposit, but we're talking about money, right, in some account, a stock, something, right, that's growing in an in interest-bearing way, right? So say, have you heard this, right? Say someone advertises 2% some bank advertises 2% per year, right? Or they might say 2% APR, annual percentage rate, right? You heard this before? Yeah. Maybe? OK. So 2% per year is what maybe they advertise. Oh, that's awesome. And actually, by the way, if you were to go try and find a bank account with 2% interest right now, impossible. OK. That's even like way too high. My bank account gets like a tenth of a percent of interest, right? But let's just suppose you could get 2% per year. OK, now, from yesterday's discussion, you would say, OK, well, I take the amount I have in my bank account. And after one year, it's going to grow by 2%. So what that means? That should be what it means, right? Right. So we multiply it. How do you make something grow by 2%? We talked about it yesterday. We multiply by 1.02. Isn't that what you multiply by? OK. So you wait all year. And then finally, at the end of the year, they give you they multiply the amount in your bank account by 1.02, and that's your, that is your new balance. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. Okay, wait. I'm glad it made sense, but that's actually a little bit of a lie, okay? Because anyone who has a bank account, do any of you have a bank account? No, no. Yes. All right. Yeah. Know that that's actually not how often you get interest. They don't wait till the end of the year to give you interest. How often do they give you interest? Usually it's every month. It's, it's what my bank account does. I think that's probably what most of your bank accounts do. Um, so actually what they do is they don't give you 2%. They give you, they give you 2% divided by 12. They give you, every month, they give you a 12 of 2%, whatever that is, right? That is not very much at all. Do you agree? It's only a 12th of 2.02, right? So this is actually the interest rate. You guys see what I'm saying? Even though they advertise 2% interest per year, there's a little asterisk next to it. You know what I mean? Then you go read the fine print, it says compounded monthly. It means they give you the interest every month. You with me on that? All right, but now there is another, here's the bright side. How many times do they do it each year? They don't give you very much, but they do it 12 times per year, right? So at the end of one year, if you plug T into this formula as one, then what if, at the end of the year, how many times have you gotten interest? Not just once, but this will be what up here, this exponent? It'll be 12 times, won't it? At the end of two years, how many times have you gotten interest? A total of 24 years, 20, 24 times, right? Does that make sense? So you're not getting very much interest, right? It's only a 12th of what you would expect, right? It's only a 12th of what was advertised, but you're getting it 12 times as often. So actually, actually, in reality, that's actually what you want. It's actually better in the, in the, in the end, actually. This grow, makes this grow just a little, you actually have a little more money at the end of the year because of the way they do this. So, I mean, they're actually doing you a favor is the point. Okay, so that is where this form, this, this, that's what motivates this formula here. Do you see it now? Yeah. By 12, I mean N in this formula. Do you see it? If we're compounding every month and T, is measured in years, then n is 12, right? So you can see how I kind of plugged all those things in here. Uh, if are there other things you can compound by? Well, if you did it once, if you did it only once a year, like we started by saying, then what would n be? If, o if we only compounded one at one time every year, n would be 12. One, one. right? Sorry, and if n is one, then it reduces to the formula that you liked from yesterday. Right? It's just the simple, plain old 1 plus r all to the t, right? if n is 1. So that's kind of boring. If uh, we're compounding monthly, n is 12. What, how many times would you co compound in a year if we were compounding daily? How many times? 365. Yeah, 365 would be our n value, right? What if we were to do it every quarter? Yeah, that's another fine. I mean, you don't. 65 in a quarter. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What if you were to do it every quarter of the year, though? Because financial people like to talk about quarters, right? You ever talk to see men in suits talking about like, oh, how are your financials in the third quarter? You know, like, right? You ever hear people say that, you know? Just because like financial people often work in like quarters of the year. So say you were compounding uh, once every quarter, how many, what would N be? Yeah, it'd be four, right? Because you'd have compounded four times in the year. If you compound once a week, sure, then N would be, oh, come on. <laughs> how many weeks I 52, thank you, John. <laughs> Good, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, this is the stuff I just said. It says up in the corner, no need to take notes on this, so please don't, okay? But this is just what we were just saying a second ago, okay? Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to move quickly along here. Okay, don't take notes on it. It says, do not take notes on this. Yay, okay, all right. Dis disclaimers. No, it's not talking to me. Okay. Trying to derail me, bathroom person. Okay. No, I'm never. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's show you with a, with a nice example here how this formula will work for us. Okay. It does exactly what I just said it would do. Um, we should say before, maybe I, I didn't highlight it, but why are we using P? To represent the initial amount in the bank account. Yeah, did you see the word I used? I threw it out there, but I didn't say it yet. It's the, called the principal of the bank account. It's the amount that the bank account open, you open the bank account with. Right? So this is, this is your principal, P. Uh, Antron is this guy, I guess. He's going to invest $3,000 in principal. 
in a bank account that pays 12% interest. Whoa, okay, it's not a bank account. It's actually like a, uh, it's like a sweet um, investment fund of some kind. It's like, he's got Microsoft stock or something that's growing at 12% per year. Maybe that's more realistic. So what's R? R. Um, the annual interest What is it though here? Point 12. 12. Yeah, let's be clear. It's not 12. It's 12 over 100. It's 0. 0.12, right? Everyone good on that? Uh, compounded monthly. So in that formula, how often are we compounding in one year? 12. 12 times. That's like my example. All right. So, so in general, our formula for the amount of money, we'll call it A, after T years is, let's see if we can write it. What would it be? Fill in the blanks. Twelve. Three thousand. Three thousand. Thank you. Uh, one plus. plus one plus times one plus. Point twelve over twelve. Point twelve over twelve to the power of twelve times. Twelve times t or yeah, if we're plugging in three. Yeah, for the bottom one, you have to do plug in thirty. And for the bottom one, we might have to plug in thirty. Yeah. All right. So everyone, again, calculator skill time. I want you to actually do this on your calculator. There you go. Because again, just like the, the problem I was asking you on the calculator a minute ago with the graph and all that, this is something that I, I know conceptually you get now. You're like, oh yeah, good. I have to just plug this in, great. Problem done. No, a lot of people still mess up on the calculator. So give it a try. You can type this in. Let's see if we all get the same answer. Good job. So what, what percentage rate are you getting, actually, each month? No. Oh, each month? Each month. <laughs> one? Is that supposed to graph it or calculate it? One, four, two, nine, two. Is that right? Yeah. Is that supposed to graph it or calculate it? Yeah, you should be getting oh. four, two, nine, two. Can you give me a little more on that? Four, two, nine, two. Point three one. That's an excellent place to round to. Why? Because uh, why? Because money. Because it's money. dollars, right? And cents. Isn't that what you normally round to? Okay. Is that cool? Or if you're not getting that, then you're typing it in wrong. Make sure you can actually get this. The most common mistake is this three up here in the exponent. Okay. When you type it in, make sure that that's. 12 times 3, it's in parentheses. Or how about we just type in 36? For love of Pete here. Is that good? If you want to get the next answer, I'm going to skip it, I think, but plug in 30, right? Or whatever you like. It's a lot. It's a lot of money, right? 12% interest even after three years? Check this out, man. 12%. I just want to make sure you have this in perspective. If you've got 12% return on some investment in your life, that's excellent. Like if you have real estate investments that are returning that much on you, if you have if you have investments because you're, uh, like if, you, if you've like given money, yeah, exactly, you're talking Shark Tank, right? You, you've given money because you're like rich. You uh, you want to like uh, you want to buy up a company that claims certain growth, some growth, right? If the company grows by twelve percent, this is a big deal. In three years, you went from three, having three thousand dollars to having four thousand two hundred ninety-two dollars, right? In only three years. So if you have a good perspective on this, 12% is like awesome return, right? Even 2% is a lot, actually, if you think about it, for free money, you know. Um, okay, anything else you want to say about this? Okay, so this is this compounding formula. Some of the homework problems, or some of the problems that we'll see in the coming days, we'll talk about this, and I want to make sure you're okay with it, okay? Uh, one other thing I'd like to see if we can talk about in the last few minutes is the following idea. I know I'm throwing two big ideas at you today, so hang, hang with me here. Is the following idea, all right? It's always divided by 12. It's always divided, it's, yeah, we, in that formula we did point one two divided by 12, and then up in the answer we're times 12, right? But it's different, that's because we're compounding monthly. We said it would be different if we were compounding like daily, then that would number would be, in both places would be, what? If we were compounding daily instead, in both places that number would be, instead of 12, dividing by 12, and up in the next one, multiplying by 12, 
if we change that number to one. Yeah, right? It's however many times you get interest during the year. Exactly. All right, hey guys, take a look at this problem. Wait, what? Did we just switch gears completely? Well, yeah, yeah, we did kind of, okay. Um, it's all good. Because this looks easy. This looks like ones we've just been doing. It's like the warm up today. I love this problem. It's my favorite problem ever. <laughs> Except, wait, there's something interesting I want to show you. Just to just cut it. Just because, you know, we're interested in things in life. Right? I want to I show you what happens. Let's play around with this and see if we can do it without a calculator, too. The first one's easy. One half to the zero. What's that? One. Rock and roll. What's one half to the one? So far, so good, but already there is trouble afoot. Do you see it? Do you see it? Maybe you don't see it. You're right, you're right, good, 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 good. Yep, let's, but is, there's trouble a brewing. Are you ready? I'm plotting these points now, and what do you see? Do you see what I see? This is a little bit different than what we've been seeing before. Do you see it? Yeah, and then one eighth, right, etc. It's going down, All right? Okay, so what maybe, as we go this way, what's happening every time? We're, di we're, we're dividing by two every time as we, go th as we go this way. So what happens when we go this way? Oh, so what do you think this is? What do you think this is? What do you think this is? Eight, I'm already off the chart. Okay, so is it really true that if you plug negative one in, you get two? That's what you just claimed. Is that really true? Try it. Is one half raised to the negative first power, is that really two? Yes. Actually, yes. Do you agree? This is, again, one, one more advertisement for the last unit. Isn't this why we just did a unit on exponents? I hope you're comfortable with the thing that Tyler just said. Isn't, are you comfortable with it? One half raised to the negative first power is two. Right, you got a little flip action going on, okay? What's one, half, what's one half raised to the negative second power? What's one half all raised to the negative second power? Positive four, it is, right? So I need you to be able to resolve these exponents. So anyway, one way or no, the, another, I think we're all agreeing, aren't you, that this is the picture? Agree? Agree? Yes? All right, good. This is not exponential growth. This is not growing like we've seen all of the other graphs we've been looking at, right? It's called exponential decay. Decay, it's called. Yeah. It's called exponential decay. So I want to make sure that you're aware when this happens. And actually, that's a good question, Mr. Chase. When will this happen? Because I didn't see this coming. I didn't see this coming. When it goes down, no, 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 I don't mean that. I mean, when we look at the equation, can we know by looking at the, because it's a fraction? Um, well, uh, if we looked at this one the other day, folks, we looked at this one the other day in your notes, you can look at it, and this one was growth. Because the denominator is higher, now we're on to something. What's the, yeah, what's the rule here? Something less than or greater than one we're talking about, right? Is that what you're going to say, Carlos? <laughs> yes, yeah, domain is still all reals, okay? No, the, the range is still zero to infinity, right? Because y is still as low as zero, and it's highest infinity. The range doesn't change. Um, all right, well, let me hand out this packet here. I was like, oh, okay. I'd like you to encounter, the homework's written on the board already. I'd like you to encounter tonight uh, some of these exponential decay problems, and we'll come back to applications some more tomorrow. Don't you work. Okay? I promise. Like, yeah, the homework is on the piece of paper for you right now. <laughs> oh, on the bottom, that's when you put a negative back on. Yeah, we did that kind of already. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And then you are right. Like, there's so, so much wrong with that class.